Hello Watch Enthusiasts! Now this is my final Baselworld coverage um, instalment, and in this video I'd like to talk about casual and sports watches, which aren't necessarily chronographs or dive watches, but still retain a certain everyday usability. And so as a result, um, it does make sense to include everything from GMT watches, to pilot's watches, and even to some pseudo-dress watches. And so the first watch I'd like to address is of course the Rolex GMT Master II. And various people have asked me my opinions on this watch, and so I'd finally like to, to give my coverage on this, um, uh, this highly awaited and uh, a greatly anticipated model in the, in the Rolex line. And this particular model actually comes in three variants, um, in terms of the new versions released. But the first one I'll talk about is the, the, the 126710 BLRO. And this piece comes in the new Oyster Steel, which is effectively Rolex's 904, but, um, but is, is now rebranded, with a Pepsi Cerachron bezel. And this is the part that's been long awaited to see a steel Rolex GMT Master II with this, this bicolour bezel in red and blue. And this piece will no doubt be, be a, a bestseller, and I suspect the waiting list will extend well over two or three years for this watch, which is, um, is in my eyes, madness. But even so, for those who particularly want one of these in their collections, I can certainly see why one would wait. Now, the watch itself remains very similar to the standard GMT Master in the Rolex range, so we see the, the same material for the bezel. Likewise, a black dial and a red, uh, a red GMT hand are, uh, are featured on this watch. But the one bit which, uh, which a lot of people have talked about is the bracelet. Because now Rolex has, have reintroduced the Jubilee bracelet on this watch as a, um, a new sort of update to this model. And of course the Jubilee bracelet is usually a couple of hundred uh, more than the standard Oyster bracelet. But in this case it is historically quite interesting on the, the uh, or rather in the case of the GMT Master II. And so as a result many people have been extremely pleased to see this back on the watch, giving it a slightly more dressy um, style to it, rather than the Oyster bracelet which is more typically the Submariner's uh, bracelet. Now whilst the case of this watch and its water resistance remain the same, with 40mm in diameter and 100m water resistance, the internal workings of the watch have been updated significantly. Because last year we saw the new range of, of Rolex movements, first seen in the new red, uh, red Rolex Sea Dweller. And now we've seen the, the GMT alternative. This is the caliber 3285, a 70-hour power reserve model with their, their cut-out, um, highly efficient escapement. And of course this, um, this does incorporate the, the GMT function. And this marks the future of Rolex movements, with this, uh, this longer power reserve to come and meet other brands at that sort of um, length of power reserve, which is now becoming expected in this range of movement. And so as a result, this watch really does present the future as far as Rolex GMT sports watches go. And of course, with this, it's very much same old, same old, which is typical with Rolex of um, of sticking to their their history and their principles. And of course, the same maxi dial and maxi case remain in place. And the price for this watch will be eight eight thousand eight hundred um, pounds. Though I do expect the price to easily be twice that, um, bearing in mind the waiting lists on the grey market. Now, two models which I don't think have been given the necessary attention they deserve, however, are the references twelve six seven eleven and the twelve six seven fifteen. And these are both CHNR models. And what this means is that these are two-tone um, and solid um, Everose gold models in the Rolex range of the GMT Master II. However, these models now feature um, rose gold handsets and surrounds their indices, but more importantly, a root beer bezel. And what this means is that one has black on the top of the bezel and then a brown on the bottom half. And though this, this design may not be to everyone's, um, and everyone's taste, it certainly gives a very, very different flavour to the Rolex range. Now both of these models also take on the movement upgrades and changes seen on the, the Pepsi model. However, these are only available in two-tone and, uh, and solid Everose gold, and so as a result are more exclusive, with the, um, the two-tone costing £10,350 and the full Everose gold being 26950 but certainly these do add something to, to Rolex, and I'm pleased to see this very historical part of the Rolex range put back in its place. And it's peculiar, because over the past two years Rolex have been far more keen to include parts of their history in their watches, which previously Rolex have been very, very keen to avoid. One rather wise point in my eyes with these watches is the choice to put them onto, um, onto Oyster bracelets rather than Jubilee bracelets. And the reason why I think this is wise is because if if maybe this point is only a, um, an ideological or a conceptual one rather than one which is, um, is actually based on, on real life. At least this means these watches are far more connected to their sporting heritage than if they were on a Jubilee bracelet, they would seem mar far more dressy. And so as a result, I appreciate Rolex's uh, point here of making these watches quite clearly a sports model rather than moving into their dress range and remaining everyday pieces to be worn um, with, with, uh, 
with with less care than you would wear, for example, a Cellini model, um, which I think is a, is a good point to to include with these watches, and one which was important to retain. Now, whilst on the subject of uh, Rolex Group bezels and GMT models, it would be impossible to ignore the the new release of the the new Tudor Black Bay GMT. And this piece, I suspect, will be one of the best-selling models of this year, because it's such a um, uh, an impressive model in terms of offering both to, uh, functionality, the quality that Tudor offer, as well as the fact that this watch is really a third of the price of the, um, the, the full Rolex model, and so as a result, I think they won't be able to sell these things fast enough. Now, these watches share the form factor of the Black Bay line, with a 41mm diameter and a 200m water resistance, which means you will still be able to swim and dive with these without any concern. Likewise, they do still retain the um, the, the, the snowflake-style hands, which appear um, uh, appear in, uh, in in polished um, silver in this case, rather than the the, the gilt style of, of other Black Bay models. Also, the dial features smaller indices, which are moved further out to the edges of the dial, and as you can see, infringe on the um, on the edge of the, the the second track, which is an interesting choice and does broaden the appearance of the dial. Though uh, though I imagine that uh, opinions on this will be div will be divided. Of course, being a GMT watch, the date is placed at 3 o'clock, and, and is presented in white, which is admittedly a more classical way of, appro of approaching this, though I think many would have preferred a black date wheel with white text. Of course, the branding on this is also fairly, fairly minimal by comparison to, to other models, with simply Tudor Genève and GMT chronometer officially certified on it, without any mention of the 200 meters of water resistance. And of course, the bezel itself does give off a wonderfully old-fashioned style in its uh, anodized aluminium finish, with, of course, the matching red um, red GMT hand finished with a snowflake tip, which is, is, is an interesting choice and certainly does tie into the Tudor branding of those snowflake submariners. And the detailing on this watch is excellent, with brushing on the lugs and, uh, and those wonderful um, uh, bevels down the edge of the lugs, which are no longer seen on Rolex watches, so it's great to see them elsewhere in the Rolex slash Tudor um, world of, of watches. Furthermore, the crown remains large and protrudes from the side of the watch with the Tudor double rose on it. And this allows the watch to continue that old-fashioned style without the crown guards and potentially have smoother, more slick lines. The bracelet uh, this watch comes on, other than the, the strap and the, um, the, the, the Tudor style of NATO, we have this, um, this, this riveted, or at least riveting, riveted appearance style of, of uh, oyster bracelet, which is just perfect to give off both an old-fashioned charm but with all the resilience and, and toughness of a modern bracelet. Internally, this watch features the all-new caliber MT6552, which is a 4 hertz 28 joule uh, movement from Tudor, which doesn't feature a great deal of decoration, but then again, you can't see it through the case back, but uh, is, is an extremely precisely manufactured and a highly accurate movement when, uh, when regulated as Tudor do. And it does also feature a 70-hour power reserve, so if you put it down at the start of the weekend and pick it up on the Monday morning, it will still be running, which is really brilliant in a watch like this. Likewise, it features um, uh, the uh, the free sprung um, balance uh, seen in these these Tudors with the um, uh, with uh, balance bridge as well, which allows the watch to be more stable in terms of timekeeping. And then, of course, it does also feature a silicon balance spring to uh, to help it with regards to um, to timekeeping, but also anti magnetism. And so, I think this new Tudor is a phenomenal package as a whole, and offers a great deal to the buyer. The prices will vary between two thousand five hundred and seventy pounds and two thousand seven hundred and ninety pounds, depending on whether you go for the strap or the bracelet. But certainly this watch will have a very long waiting list, as there are already reports of this watch having over a year's wait on this piece, which is certainly a long time to wait for one of these, though if you particularly want a, a Pepsi GMT and, uh, and don't want to spend the full price of the, the GMT Master, then this may be a very, very attractive option for you. Now remaining with GMTs, I'd like to move to Oris, who've had a, a very, very impressive year in terms of releases. And the first model I'd like to speak about from them is the Big Crown Pro Pilot Calibre 114. And this 44mm, 100m water resistant stainless steel pilot's watch offers an enormous amount to someone who wants an in-house, very, very well manufactured uh, movement timepiece, which is somewhat understated despite its large size, but, but bridges the gap between a, an attractive everyday watch and an out-and-out -out sports watch. Now this piece is available with either a black, a matte black dial or an anthracite sunburst dial, giving it a variation in terms of styles, and likewise is available on either a, an alligator strap, a, a, a metal bracelet, or a, a, a nylon style of woven strap, depending on what sort of look you want to go for. But the dial is extremely clean and uh, inspired by the world of aviation, with the date placed at uh, 9 o'clock, and then one has a small second sub-dial, as well as a power reserve, which isn't a, a linear power reserve, so the gap between each, uh, each, um, each marker uh, gradually get, becomes larger as the power reserve winds down, which is a very clever complication, and one which really does help with this watch. 
And of course, the reason for this is this watch is manually wound. But in terms of complications on the dull one, it has these extremely legible hands painted in white, as well as the, the GMT hand which runs around the dial with a red tip on it. And one interesting point about this, uh, this GMT hand is that it moves in half hour increments. And what this means is that you can set it uh, more pre precisely to more um, time zones than, um, uh, than, uh, than a conventional um, uh, version would be. And as a result, this means that you can, uh, you, you can work with, uh, with more and more precision when you're moving between time zones, and thus this is potentially a far more useful and variable watch depending on what you use it for. The finishing of this watch is also fantastic, bearing in mind this is Oris's top-of-the-line watch, because it features uh, a very, um, very, very well-finished brushing throughout the case, with some slight polished elements. But then I do like that turbine-style bezel, which really frames the dial extremely well, and seats it very clearly in the world of aviation. The big crown is also a major part of this watch, partly because of its name, but also because it helps to wind the watch, which is of course manually wound. Now internally this Oris features the Calibre 114, which is this phenomenal in-house manually wound movement. And of course this does raise the price somewhat, uh, moving up to uh, between 5,800 and 6,100 US dollars. But nonetheless, this does offer something completely different on the market to what is, is otherwise available, with a really beautiful but very technical finishing on this movement, and of course that 10-day power reserve with the eccentric um, uh, and, uh, and indeed um, non-linear power reserve indicator, which are really great features. And so internally this, this watch certainly does cut the mustard, and presents something very impressive from a brand which is normally seen as a mid-range brand, but here they really are competing with the um, the more, imp more, more important high-end brands, which I think is, is very good to see. And likewise, the strap is also very high quality, whether you go for the, um, the, the woven one, the bracelet, or indeed the, um, the, the alligator, you really do get a fantastic package. Another new addition to the ProPilot range is the new Oris Big Crown ProPilot Alarm Limited Edition. And this retains the same 44mm form factor, and the same highly legible hands, and very very clear Arabic numeral dial. And here it's available in a, in a matte black, with, uh, with yellow accents, which I think work extremely well. But the finishing and the design on this watch I think is even better than the 114, because it creates a, a very balanced look to the watch, with potentially less complications, but nonetheless whilst uh, retaining a, uh, a certain functionality with of course that alarm function. The form factor of the case remains the same in this case, with a 44mm size, with a very large dial in relation to the body, and a general brushed finish on this stainless steel case. There are also polished elements on, for example, the bezel and the crowns, but generally it follows a very modern and, and crisp form. But in addition to the normal case, we see an additional crown, and this controls the alarm function, which is seen um, moving from the centre of the dial on a 12-hour rotation with, from that, uh, that yellow hand. And this allows you to keep track of your daily, um, your, your daily um, uh, requirements, where you need to be, and simply to keep you on track throughout your day. Or you can use it genuinely as an alarm. And of course the beauty of a pilot's watch like this is if you prop it up on your bedside table, you can use it as a clock, thanks to the luminescence of it. So really, this is a multi-purpose piece. With this watch, it's very clear that Oris have tried to keep the orientation uh, very central. And so as a result, the date has been changed into a form of pointer date. And uh, this is something I really do like. Because the dial has cutouts throughout its centre around that ring, with the, um, the 30, 31 days of the month. And then running through this gap is a small yellow marker. And this lines up each day with the date and provides you with a very clear view of how far through the month you are. And, and in my eyes a more interesting way of showing the date than simply a date window, which would otherwise have, have added clutter to this dial and made it less legible. Now the movement inside this 4900 Swiss franc watch is not in fact in-house. However, it is unique to this particular watch in the Oris range, because it's the, the Calibre uh, 910 which has been brought in specifically, and is an automatic um, movement with a 45 hour power reserve and, the, and crucially the alarm function. As well as this, it does have 31 joules. But the beauty of this is it means the watch doesn't become cumbersome as a result of having some uh, fancy module put onto the top of a, um, a conventional movement from Oris. And this means that this, uh, this, this is able to be a unique watch in the Oris range, and something really very, very interesting. And despite the high price of 4,900 Swiss francs, I think this is an extremely interesting option for those who like modern sports watches, and especially pilot's watches, from a reputable independent brand. Now the final watch from Oris I'd like to speak about is this new Oris Big Crown Pointer Date. And the Big Crown Pointer Date is a piece which has been in the collection for quite a while, but they've updated it now with a few adjustments, but the version I'd like to speak about today is specifically the bronze version. 
because this model comes exclusively in a 36mm size, making a far more delicate piece on the wrist, and a piece which is, um, is uh, far more understated and subdued than if they produced a 40mm, for example, or a 42mm of this, uh, this bronze case. And the reason why this watch didn't make it into my dress watch video is because this is a far more robust and complete watch. Even though it only has 50 meters of water resistance, it is it is highly legible due to its, its luminous uh, cathedral hands, and the fact that it has a, a far more, um, more more burly case with a larger crown and um, and generally less elegant um, uh, proportions and designs, but rather in favor of a more tough and everyday timepiece. And of course now it's cased in bronze with a matching bronze buckle on the um, on on the, the leather strap. And this creates a, a wonderful effect, a wonderful vintage effect, which is mirrored in those gilt hands as well. The dial is a fantastic choice as well, because whilst previous versions have had far more ornate and, and decorated dials, this has a, a mildly fumé style of, uh, of powder green dial. And this gives a fantastically flat effect to the dial, whilst retaining that certain colour, which will mirror the colour that the bronze case will go with time with its patina which I think is a very, very clever way of approaching the matter of, of dial colours. And of course the dial itself is very simple, with Arabic numerals and then the dates around the edge of the, the dial, which of course are, um, are pointed to by a, a redesigned pointer date with a white tip to, um, to facilitate reading. And so I think this is a very, very interesting piece, which of course features, um, as is the case with, um, uh, with, these case, with these particular watches in general, a, it includes a Sleater SW200, which is a very, very reliable Swiss, uh, Swiss ETA clone, and which works very, very well in the case of these timepieces. And so the price for this watch on the leather strap, with all its elegance, and of course the beauty of its bronze case, will be 1900 US dollars. And remaining within that range of accessible everyday uh, sports slash dress watches, I'd like to talk about this new range of Tudors. And um, just while I'm on this subject, um, I am at the moment trying to sell my Tudor Heritage Ranger in, in favour of changing up my collection a bit, and I will produce a video on this later on. But if anyone is interested in, uh, in, in the purchase or simply to inquire about the price and so on, then do by all means drop me an email about the, the Heritage Ranger at my email address down below. But the range of watches I'd like to talk about today from Tudor is a set of new Black Bay um, bezel-less Black Bays. And there's now a new size, the 32, which is a specifically um, a women oriented model in the range, and shows a very different side of Tudor. And fundamentally, the 32 is just a, a smaller version of the 36 and the 41. And the indices have also remained the same size, which means that they do appear very large on that smaller dial, which I think can have quite a charming effect. The hands have, of course, been shrunken, but uh, still, this does give a, a highly legible effect, and of course, these are available on oyster bracelets, as well as a leather strap, depending on the price. And in terms of, um, of, uh, of changes as well, these watches are also now available with a blue dial, as opposed to just the glossy black one. And the beauty of this now glossy blue dial is that it provides a certain uh, look back at the heritage of Tudor and their old submariners. And these submariners um, started to, to use these blue dials and have become truly iconic for their use of the blue dials and blue submariners. Um, and today are extremely collectible because of their use with the French Navy, as well as simply as, as consumer models. And I think the Black Bay 32, 36 and 41 are very interesting from Tudor, because what they provide the consumer with is a watch which is slimmer than a Black Bay, hence, um, hence its, um, its removal of the bezel, and likewise also has a, a more simple movement to service, an ETA 2824 in the case of these watches. And as a result is a piece which can, um, can fit into several categories, because it can be as slim as a dress watch, and with that, that utterly timeless oyster case, with its brushed tops to the lugs and, and polished sides, one can really appreciate this thanks to the lack of a bezel other than the polished one. Then of course one has the dial, which is highly legible thanks to the, um, the dive watch inspired style, and of course the hands which are also in keeping with that, but also with a, a water resistance which is still nothing to scoff at, of 150 metres. And so these watches offer a really interesting range of, of styles which sit somewhere between a dress watch and a sports watch, for every size of wrist to enjoy now, from the smaller um, size at uh, 32mm all the way up to the larger 41 in this new dial colour if you want something a little bit more flashy and a little bit more, more interesting and uh, something, something of a conversation starter, I think, amongst Tudor enthusiasts. Now the pricing for these pieces is, uh, is variable depending on the model, but the 32 varies from £1740 to £1960, the 36 runs from £1810 to £2030, and the 41 goes from 1890 to 2110. The next watch I'd like to talk about is the Nomos Autobahn. 
And this is a watch which is very different to the conventional Bauhaus-styled Nomos minimalistic watches, but does share that DNA. And this piece was designed by the Aislinger Design Studio, and was designed after mid-century car dials, notably their, uh, their odometers, their, um, their fuel gauges, their, their, um, uh, their, their speedometers, and so on. And the design of this watch is extremely interesting, and something I really would like to talk about today. And I certainly do have a few reservations with this design, but as a concept I find it very, very interesting. Now the case style of this watch is very difficult to describe, because it's a, a circle with these, these downward jutting um, lugs, which are integrated into the steel of the case, and certainly look like a very organic form, but certainly do, uh, do break from that circular style this watch follows. And the dimensions are as follows, because this is a 41mm watch, which is on the large side for a Nomos, but uh, nonetheless this has short lugs, which are, are rare for Nomos, but I think work very well with this design. And then it's 10.5mm thick, which is perhaps thicker than one would normally expect from Nomos, but then with, with the, the dial this watch has, which I'll talk about in a moment, this is understandable. And the dial of this watch is particularly interesting, because the entire dial itself is dished, and it's dished so enormously that uh, the dial actually looks like some sort of bowl. This is also incorporated into the subdials, which are also uh, domed downwards, which, uh, which is, is, is rare to see in this sort of flowing form, but works extremely well to give the minimalistic but modern style that Nomos pursue. And the dials are available in three variants. There are two white models, one with an all-white layout, the other one with a blue band around the centre of the dial, and then the other version being a fully dark blue dial, with, uh, with, with white accents and orange accents as well. And the this design of these watches is very interesting, because the dials are by no means conventional. Firstly, one has a cutout at 6 o'clock, which allows one to see three of the dates, which allows it to look a bit like a, um, a fuel gauge or even an odometer in the, uh, the, the way it's, it's presented at the bottom of the dial. And of course the date wheels match the dials very, very well. Likewise, the hands are very minimalistic, and we see a large luminescent hour hand, and then a non-luminescent and much slimmer second um, hand at 6 o'clock, as well as a very slim unloomed minute hand, also around that central axis. And this raises a curious point, because that band you see running around from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock is in fact luminescent. And what this means is that in the night, this, this backlights the hands and allows you to see them against that background. However, this does raise a few problems, because of course the hour hand remains luminescent, but when the minute hand runs off the end of that chart between 4 and 8, one can't actually read it, which is a bit of an irritation, frankly, bearing in mind that uh, it will be dark between, say, 4 and 8 o'clock in, in the morning, in, well, during some parts of the year. And as a result, it would have been extremely helpful to have this luminescent band here. Likewise, the gaps between these, um, uh, these, these parts of the band would make it very difficult for you to, um, to see the hand if it was concealed between these, and as a result, I don't feel this design works terribly well. That said, though, conceptually, I think this is a very, very well-accomplished design, and one which could lead to very good things for Nomos in the future, if pursued and improved. Inside this watch beats a, uh, a movement called the DUW6101, which is a Nomos in-house movement, which is so in-house, in fact, the escapement is also in-house, which is very rare and is, of course, called their swing system. And this is, um, is, as I've said, very rare for a brand of this size to be able to afford to make this, and so I can understand why Nomos is very proud to have it. Of course, this is an extremely slim movement as well, and is an automatic as well, which is great to see, and, um, and despite the fact there is an exhibition case back showing the beautiful blued screws and really exquisite work to decorate the back of this movement, it is still water resistant to 100 metres. And aside from this movement's inherent beauty, I do like the fact the date can also be adjusted forwards or backwards, which is very, very rare in movements, and does show Nomos' attention to detail, because it can be a, a, a bit inconvenient, and I do say a bit inconvenient because it's not a terrible ha uh, hassle, to be able to only move the date in one direction. So to be able to backwards, um, to move backwards through the dates can be a really fantastic option if you do overshoot the date by a couple of days. And so I feel this, uh, this 4800 US dollar watch is certainly not the ordinary Nomos. However, for those who perhaps already own Nomos models, this could make a wonderful addition to a collection as far as something funky and, um, and very different goes, with a style of, of its own, really, a courtesy of its particular designer, and with a style which is, is different to anything else in the Nomos collection, but still with that typical quality and, uh, and that exacting way of designing these watches, which is so typical of Nomos. Now, I was planning to talk about the, the new Longines um, military watch that's been released recently at this point in the video. However, I find the price of well over a thousand pounds potentially problematic for people who want a, a, a more approachable and, um, and more personal watch. And so as a result, the, the brand I, I've looked to is Larco, 
who I had the pleasure to meet and who I've spoken about, in fact, um, before on the channel, but also um, in terms of, uh, of my coverage of Baselworld. But one particular watch um, speaks to me in terms of being the perfect model for this video, as far as casual but, um, but sporting models go. And this is their marine watch. And this particular watch is designed to, to be reminiscent of, um, of, of submarine watches and clocks manufactured by the brand. And these watches are, are beautifully manufactured. They have uh, brushed elements on the case, as well as polished bezels and, um, and wonderful exhibition case backs, with detailing which is really phenomenal for the price for which they ask, which, uh, which will be under, under a thousand euros. And these pieces are 43mm in diameter, with very large dials in relation to their case size, but nonetheless with clear identity as far as uh, Larco goes, with the onion-style crown. And the fact that these watches follow that typical Larco style means that they're very ver versatile in terms of their design. Really, there are elements of aviation to them in the crown and the, the case shape, as well as the, the marine aspects such as the white dialed version, with those beautiful outlined Arabic numerals around the dial, and that fantastic railway style of, um, of, of, of minute track, with the seconds placed in the subdial at 6 o'clock. And of course the hands are beautifully thermally blued, with the Larco signature on the dial, and then made in Germany at the bottom, meaning very simple dials, but ones which are very clear to read, and very, very easy to, to approach. And of course this comes in a white and a black dial variant, with the white dial being a very glossy white, and the black being a far more, um, more, more matted style. But the whole design of these watches is for, for legibility, and this is certainly achieved extremely well in both variants. Now, I must say, if I was going to, if I were going to go, go and buy one of these, I'm not sure whether I'd go for the black or the white, because I find both to be extremely appealing. But certainly both have their own way of, of approaching the matter of legibility, with the, uh, the black dial having a little bit more, more legibility with regards to having the, the white tips on its hands, but the white version being, um, be, being inevitably uh, classic, and really beautiful in its execution. And despite their fairly simple presentation, these watches are still water resistant to 100 meters, which is excellent to see, especially from a watch with such an, uh, a large exhibition case back. And the exhibition case back allows a view into a very, very well decorated Unitas 6498. And the 6498 is certainly an old fashioned movement with a very large balance wheel and workings which do appear more akin to a pocket watch than a modern wristwatch. But the charm of this movement and the, the, the stability and resistance to the elements this movement has are, are really, uh, really admirable. And so I think this is the perfect movement for this particular timepiece, to be able to, to be old-fashioned but accurately regulated. And the elements that aren't yet decorated will be on the final version, but um, so far this watch seems an extremely promising and really beautiful proposition from the brand, as far as something completely different to Flieger watches goes. And as I've said, the price for these watches will be below the thousand euro mark, which places them in a very strong position to really be able to, um, to, to compete on the market, especially since these are still made by a very small, a small team in a very personal way. Now one watch which I felt I absolutely had to include in this video, because it's just too wacky to ignore, is the new Breitling Navitimer Super 8. And the Super 8 is a 46mm brushed stainless steel watch with the crown placed at the 9 o'clock position. However, at the bezel, this is a full 50mm in diameter, making it a really very hefty timepiece, and something very different to other Nami timers on the market. Now recently, Breitling has been getting a lot of flack for, for changing its Navi timer range away from the conventional um, chronograph um, and uh, slide rule bezel model of, um, of, of Breitling. However, with this watch, at least one can say it's not unoriginal. Because this watch is a, a very, very large stainless steel timepiece on a, on a leather NATO strap. And the watch itself is based on, on the 6, 637 stopwatch, which was produced for bombers by Breitling in the 1930s and 40s. But of course this watch isn't a chronograph, so it doesn't have a stopwatch. But the idea of that older watch was that it had the, um, the crown and, and monopusher on that side of the case, so that if you strapped it to your leg, you could press that um, to, to engage the chronograph. However, in this case it is somewhat wasted, though admittedly having it on the other side of the case will make it very difficult to wear. And what the watch does retain um, from the, the older Navi timers is a, an internal bezel. And this is controlled by that, that large 50mm highly, um, a highly grippy external bezel, with that very large red arrow that turns around the inside of the dial in a uh, in, in way of, um, of being able to, to, to time things. The dial is brilliantly executed, I think, in this fantastic dark green um, in this sunburst effect, but there is also a more grey version available. And the hands themselves are, are very nicely modelled on older Navi timers as well, with that though those sharpened sides and points. And there is still an element of a syringe hand to these as well. 
The second hand is a brilliant choice, with a, a tremendous counterweight on it and a really wonderful white design, which I think works extremely well with the Arabic numerals on the dial, which are, are very much in keeping with old Navi timers. Also, the, the track around the very edge of the dial for the seconds is also very, very, uh, very well considered, and though this would work better with a chronograph, still is, is attractive in this configuration. And the case is available in either steel or titanium, but as of yet I can't find any, cr any, any clear prices for these watches, so I assume these will be released in subsequent weeks. But inside the watch is the Breitling B20, which is effectively a Tudor MT5612. However, in this case, it loses the, um, the silicon spring, and, and has a few changes made to it as well as full decoration. But otherwise, it is very much the Tudor movement, and does allow it to, to, be, um, to be regulated very carefully by Breitling, and made, uh, made very accurate. And of course it retains that 70 hour power reserve which is so brilliant in terms of giving the wearer um, the flexibility of being able to put down the watch and wear another watch in, in, between, uh, in between wears. And due to the inherent heft of this watch, it is sold exclusively on a leather NATO strap in this very thick configuration with metal keepers, which I think is exactly what this watch needs as far as dressing the whole timepiece down and making it a very, very interesting watch, perhaps not as the only watch in a collection, but a very interesting novelty watch to be enjoyed by an existing Breitling collector or simply a pilot's watch collector in general. Now the final watch I'd like to talk about is quite possibly the ultimate casual sports watch, and this is the Patek Philippe 5740-1G-001, i.e. the Nautilus Perpetual Calendar. And at 40mm by, uh, by 8.42mm, this is a very slim watch in relation to its size, and certainly is by no means a cumbersome piece. However, the finishing suggests all the sporting um, uh, interest and, um, and history this watch could want, with a lot of brushed elements on both the bezel and the bracelet, but with enough polished elements around the edge of the bezel, the, uh, the, the rims of the case, um, along the, the, the bevels, along the, the bevels of the bracelet, and also on those polished plates on the bracelet, to give a very, very dressy appeal. And this watch is a very, very interesting piece, because it, it shows the incorporation of one of Patek Philippe's most renowned and historical movements, with one of their most recognisable cases. And this, this model is only available in white gold, in full white gold, and as a result this bumps up the price quite significantly. The dial remains the classical blue, which I think is just the right colour for this watch, and it still has those, um, those uh, rounded hands and the sharp, um, sharp edged and uh, loom filled indices. The dial features a tricompax layout, with, uh, without a chronograph of course, but purely with this perpetual calendar and a moon phase. On the left hand side of the dial we see the day of the week and the, the 24 hour time. Then on the right we see the month and uh, whether it's a leap year or a standard year. And then at the bottom of the dial we see the day in the month and the moon phase. And this creates a very, very well balanced, but beautifully designed um, format, especially since those two side subdials are coaxial. In truth, the only major compromise with this watch is the water resistance, which is halved down to 60 metres. However, one has to ask how many people are going to go swimming with a, um, a white gold perpetual calendar, which costs 105,000 Swiss francs. And so internally the watch features the, the Caliber 240Q, which is a real classic of Pedic Philippe's, with a, a micro-rotor automatic winding, uh, running at 3 hertz with of course the perpetual calendar and the moon phase, as well as the 24 hour time, which I'm pleased they added because it means you have that balance of two coaxial subdials, rather than simply having the one, which would, would remove the balance of the dial, and I think weaken that or the whole package as a whole. And I've already mentioned the price, but in truth that is the only downside of this watch, being 105,000 Swiss francs. And this does fit within the pricing of Patek Philippe, and certainly is, is an incredibly expensive watch. But that said though, I, I doubt these things would depreciate, um, like is often the case with these pieces, as a result of the exclusivity of these pieces, and the sheer beauty of the package. Anyway, I'll conclude this video here, but do leave your comments down below as to which of these watches were your favourites, and which ones you found most interesting in terms of uh, details, or indeed in terms of innovation. And if you did enjoy the video, then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel and to be able to enjoy more content here in the future. Also, do take a look through this, um, this playlist to be able to see the various other pieces of coverage I've made on Baselworld this year in various other categories of watches. So thank you very much for watching. This is Armand the Watch Guy, out.